Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome. Thank you. I want to thank you for joining us here today. And Pastor, I had a question because we have a lot of churches around the world. We have a lot of churches in our area. We have a lot of churches in California. Oh yeah. And you know, you, you see the different uses of the pulpit in some churches. And some churches use the pulpit as, or not churches, but pastors use the pulpit as a place for entertainment or as a platform to launch a personal agenda or any other use than the Word of God. And how dangerous can that be for the church if the, the most holy table in the, in the church, uh, where the place where God's Word goes out, is, uh, I don't want to say vandalized, it's tainted with an agenda. How dangerous is it for the church? You know, the churches um, in the United States, at least, I think for the last uh, many years, have um, often been occupied by pastors who have a desire to glorify the Lord. And I would say the overwhelming majority of pastors that I would be aware of, at least, are people who want to honor God. and They want to present the truth of Christ and they want to see the captive set free and all of the things that, that, that pastors ought to want. And on occasion, what you end up with is you end up seeing, um, by, by virtue of just comparison, you will see some places that are occupied by pastors who seem to have, have lost their way mm -hmm. and maybe have taken a turn in a direction that at this moment to them may seem to indicate that they're they're on the right note if you will that they're doing the right thing and perhaps even may applaud themselves and the church may even applaud the pastor for taking the turn that he's taken you know i do see that i do see um, churches that unfortunately sometimes are being led uh, by somebody who's forgotten what he was called to do and I think that that's becoming a little more common, but not necessarily overwhelming the church. You know, we, um, we've been given a mandate when the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking to the Apostle Peter after restoring him. He had said, if you love me, feed or tend my sheep and my lambs. Give them the word of God. Why? Because shepherds are to give the full counsel of God. When Paul was speaking to the uh, elders of the church of Ephesus there in a place called Miletus when he was there giving his last, really his last talk and encouragement to these men. He, he said that they are to, um, you know, to shepherd the church, they're to love the church. He said, I have not shunned to declare unto you the entire counsel of God. And because of that, he was very capable of leaving them in the hands of the Lord as he moved on to his final, his final destination. So my own pastor taught me, Chuck Smith taught me, that uh, my role is to present to, to people the kingdom of God and to present people the king of the world, the king of the universe, and that's Jesus Christ. I think that churches are making a huge turn moving into the wrong area when they become Republican churches. Mm -hmm. I also think that churches are going in the wrong direction when the pastor makes them Democrat churches. We see both. You know, in many churches, it's obvious that the pastor himself believes in the agenda of the Democrat Party. And, and from my perspective, there's a great error in that, in that, the Democrat Party is, by and large, energized by demo a demonic spirit. Any party that, that, that champions um, people who are, are homosexual, any party that champions uh, abortion on demand just because, any party that, that follows the plank that Democrats have followed, you know, I, I believe, all you have to do is examine their, their principles, you'll see, no, this is anti-scripture and anti-Christ. <coughs> On the other hand, the Republican Party seems to sometimes champion themselves as extremely moral, when in fact, 
there are just as many of them are just as corrupt as any Democrat. And so it, it is very wrong, I would say, for a church to want to make converts to the Republican Party, you know, or to make converts to the Democrat Party, to champion the causes. We, we have to understand that our call, John, is, is a greater and a higher call than that. Some people get confused, and this may even be disturbing. Some, probably some have already turned this off. I mean, that's what happens. That's the, the way people think today. If I don't agree with you, uh, I'll just turn you off. And that's, that's, that's what they do. But I'll tell you the truth. The truth is that Christ never sent me as a pastor to preach a political stance. He taught me to teach biblical principles. And if I, as a pastor, am successful at that, if I train people to think biblically out of Scripture for this reason, then they're going to know how to vote. Right. I, was re I was raised in a home where my mom and my dad were what they called Roosevelt Democrats. They used to call them Roosevelt Democrats. They grew up in the time when Franklin Delano Roosevelt was president, and uh, they loved and, and were encouraged by what they believed him to have been at that time. So naturally, not only me, but my wife Marie, naturally that's what we were. Many of us who are of Mexican heritage um, have gravitated and did gravitate towards the Democrat Party. After I got saved, I began to use the Bible to help me to develop a biblical mindset as it relates to who I elect to govern me or who I don't want to govern me. And I think that many Christians have mistakenly begun to preach the Republican Party or the Democrat Party. And in fact, while doing so, you may convert somebody to become a Republican, but they're still going to hell because you didn't give them the gospel that transforms their life. And making an assumption that you're doing God's business by helping people to see the Republican way or the Democrat way is really a disqualifier because I'll be honest with you, the pastor's role is a higher role than to be a, a political activist. And so, yeah, I think that one of the things that's happening in the church in our day, and I can understand it, seeing all the evil that has been called good, I understand it, is to, um, what is one of the mistakes I think has to been to be that the pastor has become a political activist and in doing so, uh, has actually sullied the call of the minister. Again, this is not a, a, a judgment against a brother who thinks he's doing the will of the Lord. It's really more of a concern that I, as a pastor, have. I want my church to vote. I, I encourage our church to vote. And I, I still haven't gotten to the point where I have given up hope that we can change this nation. But we have a national day of prayer for a reason. It's because we need to turn as a nation to the Lord. And uh, I think that many pastors are preaching an angry gospel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a mistake, John. I, I posted some on social media this morning, something to the effect of if Paul were to examine the, the Church of the United States, mm -hmm. would we receive a letter from him? You know, you think about the, the Church of Corinth and and these churches that were the way they were. Do you think Paul would, would be sending the United States a letter? I believe that Jesus already did in the book of Revelation. He said, repent, you know, because when he was talking to the Church of Ephesus, the Church of Ephesus had, had walked away from their first love. And so I think the church in many places have actually walked away from the first love. They may be known for good works, but they're not known for being on fire for Jesus Christ. Wow. Yes. And so uh, would Paul write us a letter? Uh, the Church of the United States being such a large, a large uh, geographic area, could there be a general letter written? I think it already was by Jesus himself. And he said, we need to return to our first mm -hmm. love because we've walked away from it. Yeah, we've got that letter yes. already. And, uh, and we need to read it. <laughs> yeah, we need to do it. It's not enough to read it. We well, Pastor, thank it. you so much. Uh, because, you, again, we see a lot of things coming from the pulpit. And praise God for those churches that are 
teaching the word of God and and but the danger that can be involved when a pastor may have a tendency to use a his, the pulpit well, John, as a platform. John, let me say one thing before we close. Um, the, a church can be numerically large in a small geographic area. And so the people there who gather might feel like we're doing something. And uh, we're showing, but here in California, for example, we have over 40 million inhabitants growing daily. Yeah. And so even if my fellowship here was 50,000 and everyone voted in a certain way, that's not going to change. That's not going to change the outcomes of the elections. It's not going to change. 50,000 votes will not change mm -hmm. it. What will change the outcome of elections is when we reach people with the gospel Amen. of Christ Amen. and help them to see that there's a right way and a wrong way. That changes their heart, which results in the change of their votes. And so we can gather people, you know, invite people to come and speak that we think are knowledgeable. And, and we may... In, inflame our people with a passion to, to re reject these things. But we're already doing that when we're teaching the word verse by verse. Mm. And so I really think that it's, uh, uh, it's really a mistake when we emphasize political parties, political positions. I think we should address them. We should address those things that are within the confines of their statements of uh, you know, why they exist and all. But, but John, I, I still believe that, you know, Paul, who lost his head for the gospel, the apostle Peter and all the rest other than John, who lost their, their head or lost their life for preaching the gospel, they were reaching out to a world that was, was pretty much ruled by, by Rome. Mm -hmm. And yet Peter says we're to honor the king. Paul says that we're to pray for those who are in authority. And he says, go out and preach the gospel, even as Jesus taught us. What's going to transform a nation is going to be the gospel. And our holy, our holy occupation is to present to people God's way. Amen. And so, I, I, I know people like to argue and they'll argue with somebody like me because, oh no, you don't understand. But I, I don't see any proof that they're doing any good themselves. Mm -hmm. And so when we... When we preach the gospel, we see people converted, we teach them the ways of Christ, we're actually actually producing salt and light, if we understood it. Amen. Or we can run around saying, I take credit for the person who just got elected because I influence so many people. And I think that's ridiculous. Because what you ultimately end up with is an, another sinner occupying an office. Mm -hmm. Another sinner who needs the grace of God. So I cut through that and I just say, what we need is Jesus. and and when you know of Jesus, then vote your conscience because your conscience is informed by the word. Amen. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for sharing. And thank you guys for tuning in. Just a couple of things. Uh, we have an interest list that's going on in our gazebo currently. Uh, for those who are interested in going to Israel next year in 2024, and the dates are still being worked out. We have a date that's listed, but I know things are still tentative with those dates. But the you can still sign the interest list, you can stop by the gazebo. Mm -hmm. And after any of our services, we have somebody there that will, can take your list name uh, on the interest list. And then, uh, uh, men, we have our June 3rd men's conference. We have a good lineup of speakers. Uh, come out and join us. You can get your tickets at the gazebo or online. But most important, uh, we have our Sunday services at 8.30 and 10.45. Uh, Pastor, you're taking us through the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, invite your friends and family to come out and join us. We've been having a great time on our Wednesday and Wednesday evenings and Sunday morning services. Mm -hmm. And we have a time of worship. So a great idea to invite your friends to come out and join us, invite your family. Uh, maybe the Lord's putting somebody on their hearts right now to bring in and uh, you can come out and join us. We look forward to seeing you. Pastor David, thank you so much of for course. your time. God bless you. Thank you guys for tuning in.